The video you're about to watch is from one of our spirit schools. God Ministries presents it, preached by Gustave Leroux. Um, you will greatly be propelled by this message. You will be blessed in every way. I would urge you to subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you. Bless you. Father, we just take your breath tonight. And I, want, I want you to feel his breath blow over you. I want you to feel his breath as it breathes onto you. You know, it's breath of life. It's a dimension of the Father that has kept the human race alive. It is that Ruach. It is a dimension of His Spirit that's pouring into you daily. Matter of fact, every time I breathe in, there's a dimension of His breath in me. Every time I breathe out, there's a dimension of His breath that goes into the earth. I remind you tonight that you are made in His image, that you are in His likeness. That the closer you get to being like Yeshua, the closer you get to living and moving and having your being in Him, it's, it's it's the, be the better for the earth, the better for every dimension of who you are. Because every time I breathe in and I go deeper into Him as a son, and I breathe that out, I breathe that glory into the earth, and it begins to realign, it begins to shift the earth into place. The, the power that you walk in, the dimension of His glory that's yours, it aligns and it shifts the earth. It is what the blood could not do. The blood restored mankind. The blood did not restore the earth. We as as the ones of the minion. We are the ones that's consumed by the blood of Yeshua. We have to restore the earth. And it's the breath of Yahweh in us that restores and aligns things again as it's meant to be. Father, tonight I pray that your heart will touch every one of these young men, young women in front of me, Father. That you will open up a dimension of who we are in you that will, that will realign and reshape us and everything we touch that we'll begin to understand the fullness of your glory in us that we are designed to live forever we are created to be in you we are literally a being that is to be united once again with the fullness of the oneness in you father we love you we praise and worship and glorify your holy name I love you, my King. Everyone in this room loves you, my King. You are glorified and magnified. And in, in this nation, Father, your name echoes of every man, every woman, every child's lips. Father, that we speak that, we prophesy that into the earth. We love you, my King. You are a majestic, beautiful God. He's drinking off you, eating off you. So, soaking in your blood, soaking in your presence, soaking in your word, eating of you, drinking of you constantly, Amen. having the ability to be in you, yeah. to walk with you in Eden, to spend intimate time with you. So you begin to, to ignite a dimension of fire in your sons and daughters and you begin to pour revelation into us so we know things that was never able for us to know, things that we could not understand or perceive and now all of a sudden there's dimensions of glory there are dimensions of revelation regarding these things coming to the body of Christ Father we love you we praise you tonight I pray that you will open up the heart of everyone in this room yeah. pray that you will ignite Father an understanding regarding all that we have done over the last 18 weeks yeah. as we go deep into your word we love your word we love every dimension of your word. We love you, my King. Your breath is what keeps us alive. We love it. We love you. Thank you, Yeshua. Amen. How you guys doing? Okay, um, I'm very excited for what God's doing in the spirit. There's just so much stuff happening. There's uh, so much of His glory being poured into the earth, and I hope that you understand. I hope that you guys are experiencing it. I uh, I hope that uh, you're, you're you're being sensitive in the spirit, sensitive to what the Father is doing, and keeping yourself full of 
today. <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. Full of the revelation that he's pouring in today. Um, you know, one of the laws is... Um, I was teaching on it last night. Is this thing still on now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, last night I was teaching on the law of harmony and resonance. But uh, harmony is really what I believe the Father wants us to have focus on. He wants us to understand it. Make it a little bit louder. So that I'm really talking. Yeah. Make okay, it a little bit softer. Hello. 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 Okay, cool. Um, I don't want to strain my voice too much. <laughs> Uh, the law of harmony is the coming together of sounds, frequencies, making a specific sound out of more than one sound put together, right? right. It's like, um, like, an, uh, like an, a band of musicians with a, with a drum, uh, bass, guitar, uh, flute, whatever, and making one sound, making many sounds become one. And what I believe the Father wants to kind of say tonight in this is that we need to take the old and the new and bring a new sound into the earth. Harmony. You know, because we don't throw the old away, the old's gotten us to where we are today. Yeah. But we cannot hold on to the old, we cannot hold on to what we know. We have to replace what we know with the new. Amen. And that is, a, 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 it's not always easy for us to do because if all I know was the old. That's the only way I knew how to do ministry. That's all I knew how to, how to love my God, how to spend time with Him. That was the only way. And then something completely different comes in and it changes all that I am in my Christian faith. And now in the beginning I threw everything out that was old. And then the Father started directing me and understanding that I have to keep the old and blend the new into it. Because then it recreates the old and the new and recreates something completely different. And that's kind of his desire because the new is still coming in waves and it's really blowing the body of Christ into a new direction. But in, in the same breath we have the old and it has to mend together. So that that which the Father is bringing from the two sides can recreate something that it's meant to be today. All right. It's revelation and it's insight. It's a, it's a new dimension. You know, I was lying on, on the floor here just soaking in him. And um, the, the engagement that I was, uh, was experiencing was was extremely vivid. Mm. I, I was lying on the, on the floor, and I, on the ground, and I could feel the, the, the ground and the sand that I was standing on. Um, I, I could feel myself picking up a specific sword that the Lord's given me in the Spirit. I could, uh, and, I, and I realized that I was thrown onto the floor by a demonic entity. Um, it was in the woods. It was very vivid, very real. Um, I've always also realized that this this garden, I would say garden, but it was more like a, 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 a woods. You know, it was um, big trees and it was a massive place. Um, I would expect dragons and, and giants to live in this place. I can almost see it in a movie scene. And um, it becomes real. It becomes more real every time we go in. And I want you to understand that the Father's desire for you is to have your spirit life oversee your natural and your soulish life. You know, when we engage these letters, when we begin to understand what the Father has made available in the Spirit. Um, I, I teach on Friday at the Denham Springs um, on, on just being the Spirit. And I wasn't even supposed to teach on that. I was supposed to teach on the courts. But when I got there, I felt the Father wanted me to teach on something specific, something different. And so I've just been going with what the Father has placed in my heart regarding what I need to share wherever I go. Well, I'm going to stick to what I need to do, but I, I, I need to, to also speak the Father's heart. And, and, I, and I was talking about being the Spirit, and I really want to kind of remind you that that's your Christian walk. That's your life. That's what your life's supposed to be. It is the constant engagement, the constant going deeper and deeper into the Father, constantly having a great understanding. And, and having a great understanding is not studying and reading the Bible, although it's part of the Bible. You know, I was accused of... Uh, um, um, I wasn't really accused per se, but someone didn't listen to what I was preaching and uh, um, misheard something and then interpreted it in, in their own way. 
and uh, kind of wanted to rebuke me in a way, and then I just, I, just, I just love on them, and I know that they didn't mean to be rude, they just wanted to, to say something from their side, because what they heard freaked them out. Yeah. And, 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 and I know that that happens all the time. And immediately when that happens, we kind of put a shield on, and say, well, I don't want anything to do with that, because that's not in my perception of the Word. But I need you to understand, I love the Word of God. But I, I don't love your perception of the Word of God. Okay, and I'm going to overshadow my perception of the Word of God all the time. Because when I speak from the heart of Yahweh, and it's not in my understanding of the Word, and it's not in your understanding of the Word. Because we have overshadowed um, our own perception. We've overshadowed what the Father wanted to say by what we believe. Does that make sense to you? Amen. For example, and I want, to, I want to focus on this just for a couple of seconds. When the Bible talks about Jesus being the Son of God, now, I need you to understand, I created my son. Yeah. Now, don't misunderstand me. I didn't form him or shape him, but my son is there because of me. Yeah. The seed. Come on. Because of my seed. Yeah. And so we have begun to believe that God the Father created Jesus. Yeah. The seed. Come on. If we believe that, then Jesus is less than the Father. Oh, well, yes. And that's a problem in our theology. We cannot, understand, we cannot perceive that and continue in believing that. That was my argument with this young lady. And, and, and I know she misunderstood what I said because I didn't say what she thought I said. But when, we, when you begin to understand what Jesus did in the Bible, He came as me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't come as God. Yeah. He gave up His deity so that He can come down into the earth as me. me yeah. So that He can show me how I'm supposed to live. That I have an, a supernatural birth. Just like, him. Just like him. And then after the supernatural birth, and I begin my walk, I have a supernatural walk. I, I'm a completely new being. Mm -hmm. But human. Yeah. With human limitations. Until I'm glorified. Yeah. He says things like, Father, glorify me like I glorify you. He constantly talks about God as his Father. And so we begin to believe that Jesus is, is the Son of God. Now, don't misunderstand me. Yes, He's the Son of God. Yeah, yeah. We, have to, we have to know that, but it's because He wanted to present me with an example of how to be a son to an almighty God. Because when I'm in the kingdom of heaven, and I know that some of you have been there, Jesus is not the Son of God. He's not walking around there as less than the Father or less than the Holy Spirit. They are one God united. Um, uh, and we need to just see that. We need to just understand that because it's out of that where the revelation of the Word comes in. And, and, and it's confirmed if you look at the very beginning what, where creation starts. And you look at John 1 where the Bible tells us that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. Word, and, the, and God created everything and everything was created for Him. And that Word always stands for Jesus. Yeah. So He was the one that created everything. We just need to understand that if He created everything, then everything came out of Him. Mm -hmm. He's not less than the Father. Right. And the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God, and that word God is a plural, Elohim. Mm. It's a combination of the unity of the one God that speaks life over every creation, all creation. And then a part of that God, a dimension of that God, was sent into the earth to represent mankind. Mm -hmm. So that we can see who we should be in the earth. And what we can do in the earth. What's available to us while we're in the earth. While we're here. Come on. Do you guys understand that? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make that clear. Because it's not in our theology. We have limited our Jesus. Now it's Jesus Christ our Lord. And then it, sometimes they change. It changes it change to Christ Jesus Lord. Or Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. They change it because he shifted in his deity. You know, by the time he was glorified and before he climbed onto the, climbed onto the cloud and flew away, he was fully God again. Yeah. Now that literally, if you look at Jesus' life, it represents the, the born-again state of a Christian and the life and the growth that he needs to go through to become what he's meant to be. All right. Jesus is born. He, he, he goes through a process of training to become what he's meant to be. By the time he is fully equipped, he becomes a rabbi. And his ministry starts. And in the ministry and in what he does, the fullness of his destiny and purpose comes to place. And then by the time he reaches full maturity, he's fully glorified. 
Now, I, I just needed to say that because it's engaging into Him, into knowing who He is. That I'm not engaging into a letter. How crazy is that? That I'm engaging into the fullness of God, into the fullness of, of Yeshua, the fullness of all of the multitude of our God, and I climb into Him, because in Him there's a kingdom, and in that kingdom there's dimensions of His Word that wants to wash over me. There's dimensions of His Word that wants to open up to me so that I can have a great understanding of my God. So I can have a great understanding of the glory that He wants to pour in and over me. So tonight when we look at some of these letters again, I want you to have an understanding that we're almost finished, and you need to begin to understand that dimension of the Word. All right. you know, I get so frustrated with the body of Christ when, when we only look at the Word of God, the written. Now I love the written, and please don't misunderstand me. I, I'm, busy, I'm busy reading the Bible every day of my life. I meditate on it every day of my life. I listen to hours and hours of the Word. I meditate on what I listen to. I go back into it and I overshadow it all the time. It's, it's my bread, it's my food. Right. Okay, but in the same breath, it's not my God. It's not my God and it's not an idol. And I do not place my God into this box. Come on, come on. Because my perception of this word is, is my understanding. My little brain, uh, that I literally only use, what, 10% of its full capacity, come on, come on. cannot understand what an almighty God meant to say. Woo. Right? So his desire for us is to, to go deeper. And let me express and explain something. When I start operating fully in body, soul, and spirit, I will start using more than 10% of my brain. Because if you go scientifically, when you start using more than 10% of your brain, you can start moving objects with your eyes. You can start hearing people's thoughts. You can start doing supernatural things like levitating, flying. You can overshadow the na nature of the natural. Mm. Which means you can jump off a of high building without breaking your kneecaps. Come on. Now that's just, that, that's just scientifically proven. <clears throat> and then if you start looking, and we don't do this because we're too lazy, but if you start going into a uh, man and woman of God that's doing extraordinary things, you'll find out that there's people today that's running up walls. Mm. There's, this, there's testimonies of people that put their hands through walls. There's a testimony where Ian Clayton says he's trying to pick up the chair and he can't pick up the chair. His hand keeps going right through the chair. Wow. I mean, there's, there's people that literally, um, like the movie Jumpers, appears in different, and, 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 and disappears into different nations oh. at will. All right. You know, there's, there's men that literally levitate. Um, a young man, I don't know, I can't remember, it's David... Uh, Mm. Not David. Bobby Connor was um, really preaching and he misread the steps. And while he was walking, he just, he didn't, he's an elderly gentleman. I wouldn't say that he's old, he's mature in his, in his, I don't know. Okay, so he walks and he walks right off the step, but he would have fallen, but instead of falling, he just kept on walking in midair. Same thing happened to, um, was that very old lady that passed away a couple of hundred years ago? Revivalist? Oh, yeah. Uh, Catherine Coleman. Yes, I love that girl. She's awesome. But she did the same thing. She just kept on walking off the stage. Now, that might not be an example, per se, of someone using more than 10% of your brain. But, but see, the understanding is I'm a spirit being. And when I start thinking with my spirit instead of my brain, I add to the capacity of understanding and revelation. That's why I can start doing supernatural things. Yeah. Yeah. When my spirit's in charge and I can literally physically go into another kingdom and that's in another realm, that's in another place where I can't see with my natural eyes, and I begin to live out of there, I begin to receive out of there, then the Word of God becomes more real. Amen. You know, I can now physically go into the Word of God and begin. Now what I do in the mornings is I, I, will, I, will, I will lie on the couch and I will be meditating on the Word as I listen to it audibly. And as I listen to it audibly, I go into the Spirit and I walk into what I hear. All right. And it makes the Word literally like a hologram. 
that I walk with Jesus while he was walking. I, I, I stand next to him while he recreates a, a miracle, while he's doing all these things that he did. I walk with his disciples after he died and what they felt like, the emotions they went through. I go into the cross, stand there with him. I feel the pain that he went through. I'm there with him. Because I'm a spirit being, I can go in beyond uh, space and time. I can operate at the speed of light because I'm in Christ. Wow. Yeah. And going into these letters is the refreshing vibration of His frequency that aligns me with who He wants me to be. Thanks. You guys okay? Yeah. Thanks. Tonight we're doing the Zadak. 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 Um, there's many different... Spellings, um, it is uh, T, T, Z, A, D, D, I, K. And there's another one that's just uh, T, S, A, D, D, E. Um, start, start, start. That, that there's many different, uh, many different uh, uh, ways of saying it, ways of spelling it. But I like the Zadak because it makes more sense. It's a little bit easier to pronounce. <laughs> My pronunciation might not be right. But I want you to hear it, write it down. If you, don't, if you haven't bought a book on the Hebrew letters yet, that'll be a good idea. They're not very expensive. Maybe between 5 and $10, and you can find yourself a good one. Um, but it, it, is a, a, it represents a person that is just. Someone that is just, that operates out of justice. As well as the righteousness of the Creator. Wow. Now, just right there we can stop, and I want you to begin to understand that the righteousness of the Creator is something we cannot fathom yet. Right, because the righteousness is a dimension of him being the Father, which represents justice and just, him being just and justice. Um, the fact that he is mercy, it's three skins. It's a part of the Father that we step into that the enemy cannot get through. So when you begin to engage this letter, you begin to understand that I step into the person, the Father, and parts of him that is just. Now just as of the Father, it means that He cannot go back after He said something. Come on, no. So if He said, if you touch the ark, you're going to die. Yeah, yeah. He can't go back on that word because He's just. All right. So the, the ark accidentally tips over and uh, the good Samaritan wants to catch it. And as he touches it, he dies. Right. Yeah. I would think that's rude. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe not you, but you know, he just try to help, but he's just. He's just. And of course, justice is another dimension of the Father. It's another skin that I step into. You know, he represents uh, a dimension of the law that when I operate in it, it has a perfection that it flows into the earth. So the Father has a specific order for things to work in, a specific order for things to happen in. And if it's out of order, out of place, it creates a doorway for the enemy to come in because he is the perversion of um, uh, justice. Yeah. But he also has the knowledge of how the justice of the Father works. Yeah. So he needs to make sure. And that's why we have to shut all doors. We have to keep ourselves in Christ at all times, out of the flesh, in the spirit. Because Satan has to find legal right before he can do anything. And if he has legal right, then he will come in to bring destruction. Right. Because he's the perversion of the original. Mm -hmm. And then of course righteousness of the Creator is the gift that comes with the blood of Yeshua. It's the gift that comes with what Yeshua did on the cross for us. It's to align us with the fullness of Yahweh. It is to place you from where you used to be and put you where you're supposed to be so that when the Father brings what you need to you, you're right there to receive it. It's in right standing. You guys okay? The engagement of this letter, Zadak, it, is, it, it helps you strive to be true. It, it strives you to bring a dimension of justice and fairness. Uh, the Father's desire for us always is to step into His character. Because I'm even understand, He's not trying to change my personality. Because He loves the authentic you. He wants the authentic you. He wants you to stay just the way you are in personality-wise. So if you're a very angry person, that's character. That's not personality. Because the, the part of anger is usually a misplaced passion. 
So his desire is to bring a character in to the personality, to realign the personality. So he wants to bring his character in, he wants to bring his fairness and his justice in. He wants to bring in the fullness of the truth, because it's the truth that makes me free. Yeah. It's the, the truth of Yahweh. Now the truth is not just the word of God, the truth has dimensions to it. Because I step into the heavens and I worship him in spirit and truth. But I don't worship him in the spirit of my understanding of the truth. I step into him because he is the truth. He is the fully revealed uh, answer to every question that is possibly able to ask. And it's that place where I am in him and he washes over me and everything I experience at that point is the truth. Amen. Amen. You guys okay? So his desire uh, is for me to strive to be true, to walk in a dimension of justice and fairness, a straight and fully honest, with a clear conscience. How many of you understand that it would be nice to live life with a clear conscience? Oh, yeah. Right? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. But because of what we were taught, now I, I always go back to what we were taught because that's uh, the primary problem we have. Because we have a belief system that has not been wiped out yet. So we believe certain things, so because we believe certain things, that brings condemnation to us. Guilt. Come on. Because we had a do-do list. Yep. And the do-do list told you they have to do this, 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 and this to get that. And if you don't do this, this, and this, you're not going to get that. And if you don't get that, and this, and this, this is going to happen to you. Or if this, this, and this happened to you, it's because you did this, 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 and this. All right. I remember sharing a testimony where someone broke into our house. But I was blessed by it because my son at that point usually sleeps in his own room. But that night we chose to put him in our bed because he was unhappy. And they broke into the house. They didn't come into our bedroom, but they came into the lounge and into the others, uh, into his room. Took some suitcases and computers and cameras. And took some money out of my wallet. Took a pair of shoes, brand new shoes. That was that was a definite no no. Um, uh, took my belt. You know who steals a belt? Let's say. Um, just took a suitcase, of course, to put everything into. And then I, I, cl I climb out of bed and I look at, I look at the, um, the door standing open with one of my son's toy cars standing there. I'm thinking to myself, now why would my wife do that? And then I realize that someone broke into the house. But I'm, pray I'm praising God because that guy could have come into that. Well, there was two of them because I saw them standing on the opposite side of the fence. We were staying in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, um, a, a complex of... Uh, townhouses right on the beachfront in Cape Town and so there was another uh, townhouse right behind us and it was very high fences but they seemed to have climbed over the fence on the other side and I could see the two men. Now it would have been a catastrophic in South Africa and it's probably the same yeah but there's no life value. People, the people don't value it. They will kill you for your cell phone. All right. You know literally like that. They will literally kill you for your cell phone. So I know that it's not a very safe place and it's dangerous but I share this with a friend of mine at the gym um, and he says to me, what sin are you in? What sin do you okay? So of course I want to give him the fivefold. <laughs> but that's our mentality. And give it to sin. That's, right. that's what we believe. Well, okay, well it must be because you're in sin. Yeah. That's like a Hindu thing. <laughs> yeah. That's karma. And our God doesn't work like that. Amen. And we need to begin to understand that. And God does not work like that. You know, if I... If I if I do, if I'm obedient to the Father, it's natural for me to think, oh, okay, well, now God's angry with me. I need to uh, realign myself as quickly as I possibly can. And, and I must start praying louder and start going deeper into the Spirit. And, and I, it's a time period that I have to really work at getting back to the Father. And I would literally feel the, 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 the I wouldn't say the wrath, but, but the discipline the Father applies to my spirit when I think like that. Because it says immediately, it says, that's not how I operate. That's not how you are with your sons. If they do something wrong, you, you, you address it and you deal with it, it's over. You never even mention it again. Because that's the Father's heart. Amen. Not, that's not the way we see it, though. <laughs> so the Father's desire in engaging the sense for us to go through that process of change, to find that... The, the character of God meshed into your personality. You guys okay? 
The idea is that the, the, the world is shaken, so every person must face their own evil and learn to restore it. You know, there's a, a scripture in Genesis 50 verse 20, where he says that whatever the enemy has meant against you, I'll take, turn around, and, me, and, and, and get you saved many lives with. That's my own translation, but that's kind of what it says. And that's the Father's heart. Now, whatever is happening in your life right now, wherever you're at, the attacks is coming to you. The enemy wanting to kill, steal, and destroy. You're in the process of learning a whole another dimension of your faith. You're busy starting to walk in another dimension of who you are as a spirit being. You're busy experiencing things in the spirit you could never have experienced because it was never taught. So now there's a big shaking in your faith, a big change in your faith, and the enemy is coming against you with all force. We need to understand that the Father's desire for you is to know that He is right there in the midst and He's lifting you up, constantly aligning you, bringing your personality, uh, his, his, his uh, uh, character into your personality, changing you, molding you, folding you, taking the bad and having the Father turn it around and let it become a blessing. Amen. Because He brings restoration. He doesn't only bring restoration sometimes, He brings restoration all the time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Are you guys okay? You know, I'll share a testimony that uh, David Hogan shared over the weekend. It was really just, really just blessed me. Um, he was in Germany, and um, he, he gets to the meeting, and there's a little baby. The baby comes being pushed in, and this, it's a, it's a, you know, Germany is mainly white people. It's like neon white. Have you ever seen a German? Yeah. It's not normal white. It's like a neon white glow, white, white. like yeah. very anti-sun. Right, so he's in this, in this um, meeting, and it's just Germans. And this little baby comes in, and the baby is neon black. Mm. Now, I don't know if you know what neon black, look, black looks like. It's really dark. It's like a, an African black. Like, 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 not, not, not like, like an African American. It's dark, 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 dark. Like a... Um, um, like a blue black. <laughs> yeah, like a blue black, yeah. And uh, he picks this baby up, and it's extremely misformed. Her head is swollen up and all dented in, um, her legs are twisted, her arms are twisted, and she's a big mess. Matter of fact, he looks at, 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 at it and says, what is this? Mm. It did not even look like a baby, it was still alive and breathing, but then he starts telling the story about how this came to be, because there's only a bunch of Germans in the room and there's one neon black baby. Doesn't make sense to him. So the mother and the father that adopted the baby came forward and said, well, we had both had dreams, and in the dream uh, we were had an encounter with an angelic, an angelic being. And the angelic said the same thing to both of us, and it was this, go to Africa and adopt the most disformed baby you could find. Wow. Now that has to be an audible voice from God for anybody to do. Because it's just not easy. It's difficult. Yeah. And so... They eventually get to share this with each other, and they start going on their journey. But instead of going to Africa, they found that, um, I don't know the story exactly, but they went to Africa, but the baby they wanted was transferred back to Germany somehow. They get to see this baby, and when they saw her, they knew it was this one. But in, in reality, you need to understand, you can't just adopt any baby, especially just adopting a baby from Africa is already a mission. Adopting a... a um, misformed, unhealthy baby is even more ridiculously impossible because the baby wasn't going to make it, she wasn't going to live. But anyway, the story was told and they eventually got the baby and at that night when, when David was there, all he did is he held her the whole time and he prayed over her. There was no miracle whatsoever at all. But he, he said he fell in love with her and a couple of months, other couple of months or, 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 or two years later, he comes back to the same meeting and there's this little girl hanging on his leg, like perfectly normal, beautiful little three-year-old girl hanging on his leg. And he has no idea who she is. Wow. He doesn't know where she comes from. He has never seen her before, but she just hang on him all the time. So eventually he picks her up and she's kissing him all over the place. And, and he's like, who are you? And she takes out a photo and she shows, her, shows him a photo of him. Mm. <coughs> And then she takes out another photo and shows him the photo of who she is and what she used to look like. Wow. And she looked like that because the, um, the African, I don't know, the Hajat went into the village, killed everybody, and 
she was left and they threw her for hyena bait. But they didn't eat her and then she, she was found and she survived. <coughs> but it was the touch from heaven. It was him touching her, yeah. loving on her, yeah. that, that healed her completely. The healing was so quickly they couldn't believe it. They didn't think it was ever possible. As a matter of fact, the doctors just said that she's going to die. Mm. But because of the touch of heaven, yeah. there was that dimension of the miraculous that happened. Someone's obedience to be at a certain place at a certain time that has walked a certain walk with the Father, that has that understood the, the glory and the fire that's on him, and just been where the Father wanted him to be. Thank you. I just love that. It's that's, that's the Father taking a big mess and bringing restoration to it. And that's, of course, possible for everybody. It's what the Father has called us to, is to take your mess and bring complete restoration to it. I love that, and I praise God for that. The literal meaning of a tzedak is a fishing hook. Now, I need you to understand what you do when you, when you catch fish. You, you throw the hook in, and whatever attaches itself to the hook is caught. Mm -hmm. So whatever you put your focus on, whatever the eye hooks into, multiplies. Right. Whatever I look at, stare at, I become. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. Okay. So the desire of the Father here is that I begin to understand... That he wants to be the one that I'm hooked into. Right. He wants to be the one that I'm hooked into so that he can change, uh, wash over, refresh, bring me to the place where I'm supposed to be as a destined son of the Most High. Thank you. Thank you. Understanding <clears throat> the justice of the Father, understanding the judgment of the Father, understanding that he wants me to walk in righteousness and have a revelation of righteousness. Understanding that he is changing and transforming me daily making me walk in truth and the fullness of the truth, getting me to understand justice and fairness, uh, knowing that his desire for me is to get my conscience to be at the place where I walk uh, fully seared. All right. Does that make sense? Mm. Righteousness and humility are the two defining traits of the tzedak. Now I want to go to righteousness just to kind of go over it. Now, there's a law of righteousness in the um, laws of Jerusalem. And um, <clears throat> the understanding of righteousness in this law is that it is a gift given and you can't be more righteous or less righteous. We understand that, right? But there's another dimension to it because that is what the Father gave us in the earth. Because if my God is righteous and He has given me righteousness, then the righteousness that I'm given from Him is a different level of righteousness. So when I step into the kingdom of heaven, there's another dimension of righteousness that I begin to walk in. All right. And that's what I, I believe the Father wants us to begin to understand. That, that as I walk in this dark, as I go into this living letter that protrudes the life of the Father into me, the gate that I walk in begins to wash over me the dimensions of the righteousness. The fact that I can shift into a deeper place with the Father, uh, aligned in a greater dimension. So, where in righteousness in the earth, I'm in right standing. So, I'm at the right place where the Father wants me for this time and season. So, when I shift into another dimension regarding that righteousness, I'm in the kingdom of heaven, I'm in His heart. I'm at a whole different place. He doesn't have to pour anything into me. I'm in Him. Woo. Woo. Yeah. We, we, we've touched base on humility, and we need to just understand what it means to be humble. You know, humble is, is not giving God all the glory. And I know that doesn't sound right. I know that it sounds, no, 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 wait, wait, you, don't, you understand. We have to give God all the glory. And yes, of course we do. But His desire for us is to also understand when He wants us to walk with Him hand in hand. He says to us, go out and heal the sick. He doesn't say, go out and I'll heal the sick. Come on. And His desire for us is to take responsibility for what we have done. You cannot take glory from the Father. <clears throat> so when someone comes up to you and says, Wow, that was amazing. And we say, Oh, it wasn't me. It was all God. We are taking glory from Him. Why? Because when I can tell you something, when my son does something good, and someone goes up to him and says, Wow, dude, that was amazing. And he says, Well, you know, my daddy taught me everything. I have nothing to do with this. I'm going to go, No, son. No, 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 no. You don't understand. You did that. And it made me so proud to see you do that. Wow! Take the glory. Yeah. <coughs> well, we don't want to do that because we're trying to be humble. Try to be humble. That's not being humble. All right. All right. 
<laughs> you got to understand that? Yeah. Humility is, is knowing that the door's on the floor. <laughs> it's knowing that the Father has taken my life and it's no longer I who live. It has nothing to do with what they think of me. It's what I represent to the Father, and I have given my life to Him. It's no longer I live, but Christ that lives in me. It is a surrendered life. It's not, I'm not trying to look humble to you. All right. Because that's not my goal. I don't want to impress you. I really don't. I don't want you to feel greater about me because I look humble. Because I, I wear tangy clothes and I, I, I'm poor. That's not humility, that's stupidity. All right. The church has been trying to be poor since the very beginning. I need to say this, and I said it before. Jesus was a multi-millionaire. Multi, multi, multi-millionaire. Come on. And I'll just, I'll just quickly throw this out. There was a thing at, called a teruma. And he was a fully pledged rabbi, so whoever followed this specific rabbi has to pay a, a teruma to him. And so Jesus, let me just say, one of his meetings at average was about 20,000 people. So you have 20,000 people that pays a day's wages, it's, a, it's a, a 40th of a day's wages to him every day. For three years. That's probably why he's clothing alone. Now I'll be honest with you, my shirt probably cost $3. My pants probably cost about $10. And my shoes maybe cost $100. And that's pushing it. His cost, his robe alone, cost a whole year's wages. What's that? $40,000. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't think Jesus was poor. No, nope, don't sound like it. Okay? Don't sound like he was dead. So we need to just understand that. Amen. So having money is not a problem. It's the love of money. Right. And I said that before. The entire body of Christ struggles with that exact thing. Mm -hmm. One thing. The biggest sin in the church today is the love of money. I don't care who you are. That's your problem. All right. And I include myself. And we have to work on that, right? Amen. Isn't that exciting? And thank you, Gustav. <laughs> but it's, it's desire for us to understand that as we go into these letters, that's what opens up. That's what begins to change. That's what gets realigned in me. Now the shape of the tzedak is a moon with a yard riding on top of it. This signifies the essence of the Creator. It, it, it signifies the essence. Now, the essence of the Creator is the substance of what He's made of. Right. Now, that in itself we cannot fathom. Because it has no beginning and it has no end. It was not created and cannot be created. It is light. It is, it is everything we can't fathom. <laughs> I can't even go there with you. I can't even try and express to you the essence of the Creator. But it's all there for me to engage. And the little bit, the drop of knowledge we have today, the little bit that we understand of the Father, is not even the beginning of His essence. But this letter begins to reveal the essence of the Father to us. You got okay? Amen. It's the essence of the Father, the essence of the Creator, who animates all matter, that guides and dwells within the one who is humble, as symbolized by the noon. Now, it is the key uh, trait is hiddenness. Now, let me just quickly go up once more. I want you to understand the Father's desire for us, again, it's very much similar to some of the other letters, is to understand that we, through the engagement of these letters, can materialize matter. All right. That's faith. And the substance, the, the, the faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is materializing matter. So that materializing that which is in the spirit realm into the physical realm. All right. And that's what, what we have the ability to do as we engage the essence of the Creator. You guys okay? Amen. Another key trait is hiddenness. Another tree, 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 key trait is hiddenness. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love the fact that I'm hidden in Him. All right. The fact that I have now, over the last six years, learned 
to no longer live in the earth where Satan sees, kills, steals and destroys, but that I live in him and I'm literally hidden in him. Where I stepped into the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has three skins. I step into righteousness and joy and peace and that slides me into the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit slides into the Yeshua with me in Him, and I have the way, the truth, and the life. Another three skins that I slide into, that I slide into Jesus with, that we are combined into each other with. That's uh, six skins plus my three skins that the enemy cannot break through. Then there's another dimension of the Father, which is justice, judgment, and mercy. And I slide into that, and we slide in together as one being. Where I'm in heaven, he's in me. The enemy cannot go there. I'm hidden in him. I'm hidden in a dimension of the Father that can't be seen by the enemy. It's when I step out of that. Now, I need you to understand the, 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 the complexity of trying to just step into it. I step into righteousness with revelation of righteousness. I step into joy and peace with a revelation of joy and peace. And I step into the Holy Spirit through that dimension. And from there we step into Yeshua's way, truth and life. It, it's, it's a whole process of stepping into all of Yahweh. And then for me to step out of all of that is a big fat mission. So in reality, for you to step back into the flesh is a big process of coming against everything you just stepped into. It's coming against justice, coming against uh, adjustment, uh, justice, coming against mercy, coming against the way, the truth, and the life, coming against joy, peace, and righteousness, and then stepping out into the flesh for the enemy to kill, sin, and destroy, for you to feel condemned. Then you have to repent. Oh, the Father will forgive you. Then you have to go around and get your steps back into the body. How about we just stay in spirit? Amen. It sounds like a lot of work, right? Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys okay? I love the hiddenness because it's not just me being hidden in him, but he's also hidden, hidden in me. Yes. Every dimension of the fullness of God is hiding inside of me. And I say hide, and we have an understanding of hide. He's not hiding from anything. He lives in me. Yeah. It's his hideout. Like my house is my hideout. You know, it's, it's my sanctuary, my safe place. Right? And so it is for my kids. My father is my hideout, my safe place. And I believe because we are one and He lives in me, it, it becomes His residence. All right. But in the same breath, uh, I heard this testimony and I love it. It was so awesome. So this lady is driving. She's got herself and her two kids in the car. And she's on her way to a conference to go speak here in America. And she's driving and it's her turn to go. And as she goes, there's a police car driving behind her. And um, the truck coming from downhill doesn't stop at the red light. And as she goes over, he is obviously meant to crash right into her. And she looks to him and she says, Father, hide me in you. And the truck drives right through them and hit brakes, stop. He causes an accident. And uh, everyone's blown away. The policeman is freaked out. He just saw the whole thing. And they walk up to her and they're like, and she's like, well, you know, can we hurry this up? I'm going to be late for a conference I have to go to. But she was... She had the ability through being a spirit being to have the Father hide them in that, that, that specific time in her, in, her, in Him. Yeah. Yeah. It's what Yeshua did when He shifted His soul and His body into His spirit. And uh, they could no longer see Him. They walked right by and could not see Him. Yeah. Hiddenness. Understanding hiddenness. Understanding what the Father wants to bring us to believe and walk in. Another aspect of this hiddenness is because the tzedak is hidden because they appear as ordinary people, uh, desperate despite their great spiritual stature. Now I want, I want to just close with this last aspect of, of this letter. Um, Jesus to the religious looked like a, a bum. They, they were driving, they were, he was driving them nuts. They were freaking him out. When he got to Rome, they were so freaked out, I think it was Rome, I'm not too sure. But when, they, when, they, when he got to, to the last destination, before they crucified him, Jerusalem, Jerusalem he, was, he was freaking them out because they had so many traditions and he was coming against, he was making havoc in the city. Yeah. They, they thought he was just a bum. Come on. They thought he was a big fat joke. 
So what he's done in his three years of ministry wasn't seen. I mean, they just, everybody then wanted to crucify him. They just wanted to come against him. They, they didn't see the value of the Son of the Most High. They, never, they, they, they knew the prophecies. They, they studied it. They knew what was supposed to come, but they didn't recognize it. Right. They didn't recognize the, the power in the ordinary. Hmm. Does that make sense? Right. And so we need to begin to understand the Father actually engaged in these letters as the ordinary. Because let me tell you something. We are pretty normal. But we are doing supernatural things, and what I am doing in the spirit cannot be seen in the natural. What, what, what you guys are doing in the, in the spirit cannot be seen in the natural. We look like ordinary people, but we are lining America. We're doing ordinary, we look like ordinary people, but we, we're slaying dragons and, and slaying giants and, and aligning things to fall into place for a nation. We, we have the ability to envelop a whole state in our hearts to change it. To come against powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness of this age that wants to kill, steal and destroy. That has brought a, a um, dimension of, of um, a bondage on God's people for so many years. It hasn't been dealt with. Because let me tell you something, as, as much as America brought the gospel to Africa, they, they do not live in the kingdom. Americans don't understand the kingdom. Now I say that, but, but it's changing, so don't, don't misunderstand me. Um, but most of, of our missionaries uh, is, is coming to Africa. You have King Clement. You have no King Clement. He passed away just recently. His prophet, prophetic word was so accurate that he got locked up. He got locked up because the government came to him and said, You cannot know the stuff that you're talking about. Right. It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> He's from South Africa. Uh, Rodney Art Brown. Well, I, I don't know all the guys. There's many, many, many of them. Myself, including, uh, if I look at Ian Clayton, uh, it was a South African. Um, my, one of my, my mentors, um, Grant and Samantha Mahoney, they are South Africans. All right. You know, the African nation has been sent, now not, not all of them, because it's from all over the world, come to America. Let me tell you, America is the, the leaders of what the Father wants to do. All right. and, and that is why everyone's sent here to bring this nation back into alignment, back into place, um, spiritually, physically, mentally, socially. Because the ecclesia is supposed to run the nation. The ecclesia is supposed to run the earth. But it's not. It's leaving it in the hands of the unsaved, living in the hands of our presidents. And so as we begin to understand who we are as just ordinary people and what we do in the spirit and the value that it carries and the prayers of, of, of the, you know, I, I, I always say this, there's this, this funny looking old lady in the church. No one really pays any attention because she looks crazy. All right. Have you ever seen some of those? Oh, yeah. yeah, there's this one specific lady that I love. I've fallen in love with her. She's the most cutest, most beautiful, most powerful woman I got I've ever seen. She walks with a stick. She blows the shafar, but you can't hear it. It just sounds like a... I don't know what she does. It's like... It really sounds insignificant. And she's been kicked out of church. She's been beaten up. She's this tiny, beautiful little old lady. You cannot even begin to think that someone can hurt her in any way, fashion, or form. And I pray to God that I never see anybody hurt her. Because I will kill him. Right. Literally. But anyway, she, she's just a strange lady. But then you look at her in the spirit and she's this giant multitude of the glory and the fire of God. It's gone through all the stuff that has aligned nations, that stopped wars, that's done all kinds of things that we can't even begin to fathom. And of course, we are exactly that. The body of Christ has the ability to walk in that dimension. And engaging with this letter, we begin to understand um, how significant we are in the spirit. Although I, I don't have the president come to me and ask me for, for advice, I believe it might happen still. All right. right? But that's not the point. The thing is, it's not the president that runs the country. It's not the leaders around him that runs the country. It's not our president, Zuma, that runs the country. It's not supposed to be, although it is, but we are the ones that align. We are the one that goes into the spirit and brings things into place. Yeah. And we need to begin to understand who we are. Yeah. And engaging with the tzedak, tzedak is, is to elevate us into that place. 
where we understand exactly who we are. We understand righteousness and humility. We understand the change that comes as we, we step into the truth, into justice. We become the fairness and, and we understand how the Father's desire for us is to live a conscious, free life. Yes. His desire is for us to blend into His character so it can shape our personality into who we're meant to be. It's exciting, isn't it? You guys okay? Amen. Let's stand. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Father, we just want to thank you and praise you and worship you. Well, thank you, Jesus, for what you represent in the earth, that we can be like you, that we can look at our Father like you looked at him while you were a son, while you were walking the earth, Father, while you gave up your deity to give us an example on what and how we need to be in the earth, the power, the glory that you carry, the fire that you walked in, the understanding that had, the revelation you walked in, the fullness of the glory of the Father that you presented into the earth, the love that you showed to every single one you met, the calm peace um, that, that, that you walked in, Father, the fullness of the fruits that you walked in, the love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control that you showed, just who you were. We have the ability to walk in that as we are closed in you. But when we start walking in the kingdom of heaven, we need to begin to understand who we are. We are the fullness of the glory of the Father, covered in the light of Yeshua, the God of this world, the God of creation. We have the ability to do all the things that you do and more because you said from the very beginning that you want us to do greater things in you. You want us to understand who we are as we walk deep in you and inside of you are these gates of revelation that we can go into and they are, they are, they are hidden and shaped in, in, in these letters of the Hebrew language and we need to understand that we can go into it. And tonight we're going into the Sadak and I pray, Father, that you'll begin to show us the righteousness of the Creator. You'll begin to show us what humility really is. You begin to show us, Father, how we are allowed to be aligned, changed, shaped into the truth, into walk in all that you have for us, Father, to be aligned with your character and you fill us with your glory and the name of sure that you will bless us as your sons and daughters as we grow and mature and become what we're meant to be so we can begin to align the earth back to its full restoration according to what it's meant to be. As the word tells us that the creation is waiting for the sons, yes. the mature ones, to, to wake up, to align, to, to bring the earth back into place. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you. We can step into it. I speak a blessing over your people tonight, Lord. I speak uh, uh, favor over everyone. I pray for businesses to grow. I pray for financially that you will bless everyone in this room, Father. As we begin to trade, I pray, Lord, that you will, you will open our hearts and begin to help us understand that there's a harvest in our giving, Father. Harvest for revelation, intimacy, and financially, Father. Bless your people. Take us deeper, deeper into you. We love you. We praise you in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.